When processing your yellow lights, there's two gaps, a head gap and a heart gap. A gap being the one that is not on board. So a head gap would be when your heart is in, but your head is out. And then a heart gap would be when your head is in, but your heart is out. And we treat them very differently. By the end of everything you're about to hear, watch and experience, you're gonna know exactly what to do when you tackle both gaps. Because there is a good gap and a bad gap. There is a good yellow and a bad yellow. We're gonna unpack which is which, and most importantly, what do you do when your head is not on board, but your heart has a certain tug? Also, what do you do when your head logically tries to go for something, you justify it, but you know that there's a heart gap? There is a proven playbook and a proven formula for exactly how you tackle these yellow light gaps. So let's dive in. Since we're talking about gaps, let's unpack each a head gap, and then a heart gap. Both are different versions of a yellow light and one can be even more deadly than a red. So let's tackle the bad news first. And here's the question I wanna to pose to you. Between your head and your heart, which do you think has the greater probability of changing over time? In other words, where you are right now versus next month. Can your mindset shift in the next 30 days? And I would hope that the majority of us would say, Absolutely, we can evolve our mindset. It's not always easy, but it is possible. Versus, do you think you're gonna have a different heart next month? You're not. And so if your heart's not gonna change, that's what leads to the good yellow versus the bad yellow. Because if our heart is not on board today, it's not gonna be on board in a month, in a year, or in five years. And so that yellow light, where only your head is in, will never become a green. And we all want a green light life where our head and our heart are fully ignited, all in chips, middle of the table. So the bad yellow is when you're in and this will never be in. But then the opposite can be a true source for power, for growth, for momentum in your business, in your life and beyond. So the bad yellow, head is on board, heart is not. So let me give you an example. I used to lead really big sales teams where it was all about performance and productions. We're literally talking billion dollar goals, billion dollar expectations in the sports business industry. And so you think about even in a public setting, in a quarterly number, you've got shareholders, you've got bosses, you've got leaders, bottom line, pressure, expectations, intensity, it's all there. So when you're surrounded by top producers and performers, your head loves it. Your head says, keep them. But what if they're not so nice in the locker room? What if they're not always so positive? What if they can be difficult to manage and now they're negatively impacting the people to their left and right? So you're trying to build a team, you're trying to build a culture, but sometimes there's a toxic sense of energy from these individuals. In that case, my head always said, keep them, but my heart knew they're not a keeper because I saw how it infected a locker room. So what happens is months or years go by and now I've got engagement problems. And then some of my best people, they would say, well, if you're gonna tolerate this bad behavior, then I'm gonna bounce. So now I've got retention problems. And then the marketplace started to hear about this and now I've got recruiting problems. And if I could talk to the Paul of years ago, I didn't have engagement problems or retention problems or recruiting problems. I had a yellow light problem. My head said, keep them, even when my heart knew they're not a keeper. And now let's detach from this example and think about a relationship or a job where your head says you're in, but your heart knows that this is not long lasting. You're not happy, you're not fulfilled. This is not the one, but your head convinces you to just stay in that yellow. And that yellow, can be a very slow death. Because at least with a red, snap your fingers, you can be done, no moss. You stop doing it or you don't do it. But with this yellow, where you logically convince yourself to stay in, months and years go by and you ask yourself, how did I get here? How am I in such a negative state? And that's a yellow light problem, where our head is in, our heart will never join for the party. 
So that's the hard cap. That's the dangerous yellow that you need to be aware of. Let's flip it. So now let's talk about the opposite yellow, where your heart is already in. This is a beautiful situation because these opportunities are so rare and so precious. So when your heart is engaged, you want to go all in on that. You want to make sure that you protect that. You don't want to lose that. You don't want to disengage from listening to your heart. And so how do we do that? If our head is not on board, and that's why you're in a current state of yellow, but your heart is giving you that gut feel, that impulse, you want to stay in the fight. And so what's happening from the neck up is a couple of things. Perhaps there's a self-limiting belief, something that's blocking us. And in which case, I've got a couple of questions that my executive coach taught me, and I want to share them with you. But I also want to share that you shouldn't try to tackle these yellow lights alone. Because when your heart is in, and there might just be something that you need to clear up in your head, often our mind can be a tricky beast. It convinces us to play small, to play safe, to be secure, to always seek comfort. But we all know that you cannot be comfortable and grow at the same time. So if we want to grow, if we are momentum machines, then we need to avoid the temptation of always staying in the safe lane. And that's what your head's going to try to do. So in this case, when you socialize this, when you talk to a coach or a mentor or a partner, that allows you to really feel that emotion and ask yourself, is this the best decision? Is this how I battle through this yellow light? So don't try to tackle this yellow light alone. Now, self-limiting beliefs. I've struggled with them. You've struggled with them. We've all struggled from them. So a couple of questions that I want to ask you, and all of these were inspired by my executive coach who was an absolute life changer for me. She asked me, what is the origin of this belief? In other words, where did it come from? Is it from you, your parents, society, the news, a friend? Who gave you this thought? And what I often found is when I traced it back, it very rarely was my own. It was usually somebody else's influence and now I'm trying to please other people, I'm trying to live on their terms, and as a result, I lost myself. So that's one question. What is the source? What is the origin of this self-limiting belief? One question. Another question is, what is this belief costing you? Think about that. This self-limiting belief of, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not rich enough, whatever the case is, I'm not confident enough, what is that costing you? And then on the flip side, what is the benefit of you conquering that limiting belief? So you talk about the downside is the cost, the upside is the payoff. If you were able to overcome this self-limiting belief, then what would be possible? So those are the three questions. The source and origin of the belief, what is this negative belief costing you, and what's the upside if you can conquer it? And when I processed all three, that's been a great formula for me to overcome the self-limiting belief. And also, I don't try to have these conversations with myself. I will typically talk to somebody else and make sure that community together is better. We shouldn't try to tackle these yellow lights alone, especially when it's our head that is the gap, but our heart knows it's something or someone that we really want.